All right. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for attending the NAATP webinar series. My name is Zane Strand, and it's my pleasure to be hosting today's webinar, Maximizing Your NAATP Membership, Understanding and Navigating the Value and Benefits of the Association. Uh, today's webinar will be presented by uh, a group of NAATP staff members, starting with our Dr. Annie Peters, our Director of Research and Education, then Luke Miller, uh, Communications and Development Manager, followed by Kayla Hewitt, our Communications and Program Specialist, and we'll have our wonderful CEO, Marvin Ventrell, as well. But before I hand this off to Marvin and the team, I have some quick announcements. This webinar is part of our ongoing NAATP webinar series. You can view previous webinars and register for future events uh, at our website under our events tab and select webinar series. Uh, that direct link is posted in the chat feature. This webinar is the last of 2023 and we're currently finalizing our 2024 schedule. Uh, if, this, if this is your first webinar or you've been to many, thank you so much uh, for attending as we strive to provide quality educational content focused on our eight core competencies established by our quality assurance initiatives. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and we'll send a follow-up email next week with the recording and a PDF of the slides. Uh, there will be no CE uh, awarded for this webinar. Uh, please type any questions you have as we're going along in, into that Q&A panel. Uh, we'll get through as many of those or all of those uh, at the end of the session. And uh, all right, well, I'm excited because I know we have a lot of useful and valuable member benefits. And this webinar is gonna help you understand and navigate each one of those. So with that, I'm gonna uh, hand it over to our CEO, Marvin Vendrell. Thank you, Zane. Um, hello, everybody. Happy holiday season. Thanks for joining us. If you're like most of us, you're scrambling a little bit this time of year to get to the end of the year and, and hopefully have some time off. I know our staff is. And so thank you for joining us. Um, it's an important webinar from our perspective because we want our members to understand the benefits that they have by virtue of membership. And typically in a membership society like ours, most members don't um, and, and really don't utilize all that's there. I, I've heard many times from folks, I didn't know you did that. That would have been really useful for me to know. So, so thanks for doing this. And, and I hope that you'll let the rest of your staffs know that staff members know that, uh, that these things are out there and um, never hesitate to ask any questions and, and, to, and to call our office. I had to chuckle a little bit, Zane, with your opening comment that please hold on a few more seconds while everybody gets loaded you and finish the sentence thankfully it was loaded on maybe that's not the best use of i don't know it just struck me as funny so i apologize if i'm if i'm being too informal in any event why don't we uh, go ahead and get started i'm going to i'm going to do some real basic uh what what's the association all about why do we do what we do how can you be uh accessing these things and then we'll move on to some more substantive things so um i'm going to try to answer these three questions. Who are we? What do we do? And why does it matter? I think that's basically what, what you're uh, here to learn about. So um, why don't you go ahead, Zane, and move me to the next slide. And I'll tell you, the NAATP was founded in 1978. Um, and so we've been around for a while, um, 44 years. Um, and our work has really, in a lot of ways, paralleled the growth of the profession. If you think about um, substance use disorder, addiction treatment in the 1970s. Um, it was still really, really fairly early. The Minnesota model was sort of the only and, and, and most predominant model, and, and it was good, um, but we've gotten better. And so it's interesting to me and important to me that um, NAATP has grown up with the profession and at the same time guided the profession. And that's what professional societies do. So uh, technically, NAATP is a nonprofit national professional membership society and trade association of addiction treatment providers and supporters. I use both of those terms, membership society and trade association. One is not necessarily both, but we are. A membership society brings a collective profession together to further the profession. A trade association is, is in a way, sort of more 
uh, uh, an advocate for um, business operations. And, and so we do both of those things. We want the profession to increase and improve, and we want um, our members to do well. So um, NAATP membership once upon a time involved writing a check and joining that, right? That was when we were in need of members and, and trying to build the association. And, and now we have built it and no one is entitled to NAATP membership. And, and this is very important. We need, and you need NAATP membership to mean something. When, you, when, when patients, families, uh, colleagues, press, politicians um, look at you as a member of the National Association, we need that and want that to mean something, and it does. Um, that happened in a large part because of our ethics stance, you know, about seven, eight years ago, some of you would have seen our testimony in Congress where we really said, um, you know, this field, uh, to the extent that it has some problems, needs to clean it up. Um, we have some members who are not welcome in our membership anymore. And so they're gone. And um, we're going to make this place where the good providers are found. And arguably, that's the most important benefit that you have is, is that this is where the good providers are found. So you don't just write a check. You have to be vetted. You have to be licensed uh, in all states, in all locations for all services. You have to be accredited um, in all locations for all services. You are bound by a very specific code of ethics, and you agree to be removed from the membership if should you should you fail to comply with those ethics. I'll say a little bit more about that later. Um, and you agree to operate according to a set of core competencies that we have compiled in, in what we call our quality assurance guidebook. So those are the basics, Zane, if you want to move me forward one more time. Um, our mission, provide leadership, training, advocacy training, and member support services to ensure the equitable availability and highest quality of addiction treatment. It's a good mission statement. We worked on it hard, but when I read mission statements... I kind of leave the mission statement thinking, but what does that mean exactly? Here's what it means. I think everything falls within really five program categories. We work to make members' businesses successful, right? We want to make you successful. We work to create best practices in the field, and that's business operational practices, but also clinical delivery practices. We work to create access to care. We have to do everything we can to get patient access, and access is closely tied to third-party reimbursement. If insurers aren't paying, um, access is being denied, and, and we all know that's a really a significant issue, and, and we work on that. Um, next, we serve as the field's, which is related to what my previous comment, we serve as the field's collective voice in law policy and regulations, and parity enforcement, for example, within the reimbursement context is a big piece of what we do. And then lastly, starting in, in 2020, we operate a research foundation, which is the largest move NAATP in its many decades has made. It's called FORCE, the Foundation for Recovery Science and Education. And Dr. Peters will talk a little bit about that uh, in a minute. Next slide, please. So, um, Feels like we skipped a slide, but um, could you go back, Zane? Because um, I've got, uh, all right, well, let's just do this next slide. What comes after this? Okay, all right, go back to the slide that you just had. Sorry, folks. Um, this is our quality assurance guidebook, right? So we had to focus when um, the industry needed us to really jump on this about eight years ago on first addressing operational values, that's the ethics program. And then we had to match that, marry that with, with uh, competence, with quality. So we developed the quality assurance guidebook. It sets forth for the first time, no one had ever done this, nine uh, um, core competencies that operations should conform with. And so all members of NAATP, when they sign their membership uh, agreement, agree to comply with a number of things, including uh, the ethics code, but also um, in alignment with, with the Quality Assurance Guidebook. It's available as part of your membership online. Um, and we are now working on the second edition. It will come out in 2024. It will be updated. We think it it will be more useful, have more resources in, included in it in each of these areas, and we will have added 
diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging as part of this. So if you want to think about the Quality Assurance Guidebook and its purpose, it's to establish industry wide competence, operational competence. And it's kind of a gask, uh, right? Generally accepted standards of care for operations. That's the So that's the Quality Assurance Guidebook and look for the next edition coming soon. Next slide. So I said, who are we? But now we move on, on, on to uh, uh, why does it matter? Um, it matters because successful professions depend on a body that validates it exists, validates its existence, right? Doctors, lawyers, psychologists, all of the all of the professions have professional societies that um, that speak for it. And that's got to be centralized somehow in order for a profession to sustain itself and be viable and be recognized. Why does it really matter though? It really matters because we need to return at the end of the day to what we are after here. And, and I always like to return to this. All of this is geared toward ultimately um, helping people recover, helping people recover. Um, recovery is defined as a process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness, live a self-directed life and strive to reach their full potential. There are four dimensions of recovery, health, home, purpose, and community. This is the SAMHSA definition that came out a few years ago, and I really like it. I return to it a lot. It grounds me. And as, a, as the association CEO, what I ask myself when we're looking at programs, when I step back, I say, are we achieving our goals? I have to be able to answer, does what we are doing move us toward this definition? Right. Everything we do should help move our members toward producing recovery for your patients. And that's why we're here. And that's why it matters. Next slide. I wanted to let you know that you belong to a successful association. Our association is thriving. Times are tough um, and times are particularly tough for many treatment providers. It is not easy to operate right now. All the more reason for a membership association and a trade society that helps you do your work. So the good news is we are in good shape. Uh, we thank you for, for helping us be in good shape. The membership dues drive the association. Without our members, without our do dues, we can't do any work. That's why it's really your association. So the, the more members we have, um, frankly, to be clear, the more dues we have, the more operational capacity we have, and the more services we can provide. But right now we have, re well, actually in 2022, we, we, for the first time in our, in our decades long history, reached over a thousand members, a thousand member facilities. And we're really proud of that. So you're part of a large national network of treatment providers who share a similar interest. Next slide, Zane. Categories. All our programming, and this is what you're about to hear about, um, falls within one or more of these categories. The first is convening. Um, it is an important function of the association to bring the field together. All right. A alone, we're, we're, we're operation recovery by yourself isn't possible. And in many ways, operating uh, services for recovery by yourself isn't possible. So bringing folks together, convening and networking is a huge piece of that. As our education and training, um, we have a uh, a, a significant number of education and training programs ranging from our national conference to the webinars we produce and the, and the resources that are provided in our resource center, which is the resourcing piece. We also have to help you get business, right? And that's the marketing piece. And that's why you are listed and earn your way into the AID, the addiction industry directory, which we'll talk more about. That's where the good providers are found. Um, you're not in there because you bought your way in, you're in there because you're a member of the society and and there's a, and that means something. Um, the last two pieces, researching and advocating. Advocating is the public policy advocacy piece, both in the on the federal level and in the state levels. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that uh, during Luke's piece of the presentation, but that's the advocating piece. If we don't work to improve the system by which you, we operate, we you can't you won't have the tools you need to be successful. That's that's the concept. And of course researching that's the foundation for recovery science and education. 
at the end of the day, we must prove efficacy. We have to be able to show, as all areas of healthcare have to be able to show that we are effective in order to maintain operations. Um, that's measuring outcomes in, in behavioral health and, and addiction treatment is, is particularly difficult, but it's part of what we do. And force is well on its way to showing efficacy data that has never existed before. And we're really proud of that. So next slide. Damn it. Thank you. All right, yeah, so we have Dr. Annie Peters next. Great, thank you, Zane. Thank you, Marvin. I'm um, excited to be here today to talk about uh, some of our member benefits that I work most closely with. And so I am Director of Research and Education and the Executive Director of FORCE, which Marvin mentioned, and I'll tell you more about. So next slide. <clears throat> next slide. Hello? Can Are we get that? I just see me. <laughs> there we go. Great. Thank you. Um, Can you know so, the next slide, Jimmy? Yep. I got the next slide. Thank you. So I, what? No, okay. previous. There we go. Okay. I just wanted to start with this graphic. This is a graphic from uh, SAMHSA from the National Survey of Drug Use and Health from 2022. This is the most recent publication. And I just start with this because we've long quoted uh, one in 10 people have a substance use disorder and the most recent estimates are one in six. So it's unbelievable how much of an issue this is in our country and in the world. And <clears throat> this is just a recognition that we understand the severity of the problem. This is worse than it's ever been. And uh, we recognize the hard work that you all do in caring for people who uh, needs, need support for substance use disorders. So we really care about our members and we wanna support you in every way we can. So you can go to the next slide because I wanna talk a little bit about force part of supporting our members is validating the importance and the impact of treatment on a national scale. And so we developed FORCE, which is the foundation, the NWTP Foundation for Recovery Science and Education, to do just that, knowing that our data is the future of addiction healthcare is, is in our data, and our data is the evidence of what we do. And so we need to, to harness and leverage that data. And so we want to help you with that. So we developed this program, the FORCE Treatment Outcomes Program, which really is a historic, one-of-a-kind national outcomes program. And it's a national data collection and analysis initiative. And the goal is demonstrating the impact of addiction treatment. <clears throat> addiction treatment has long not been part of, of what we think of as, as healthcare in the United States, and it needs to be. And to do that, to get to that place, we need to, to use our data to demonstrate what we do and, and how we help people. <clears throat> so this program was developed and you can see on the next slide, a graphic that describes what force is essentially. And so it, basically this shows how the program works. What we have at NWTP at force is a data repository. It's a de-identified data repository of patient data that's shared from treatment centers all over the country and even in one, uh, one international site into a centralized database. And what we do is we, this data is collected from whatever system you're already using. So uh, your EMR, your own database, a mobile app, an online portal, uh, we connect, it connects to our database through an API, which is essentially a digital highway into our database. It's fully de-identified data. And then what we do with that is we report back to you on uh, how you are doing, what your outcomes look like, relevant or related to uh, uh, all the aggregate of other treatment providers that are part of the outcomes program. We also partner with researchers. We have a number of research partners that uh, we're working on developing some, some research for peer reviewed publications uh, to really get addiction into the treatment literature more than it already is. So this is a program that uh, is 
vibrant and exciting, and we're really happy to, to be able to provide this benefit. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit about what the benefits are of FORCE. If you go to the next slide, you can see the status of the program right now. And we have 100 treatment providers. So this is distinct treatment providers across the country. And like I said, one uh, international site, which is Crossroads Antigua, uh, just joined us, which is really exciting to have it be a, an international effort. Um, and this is why this is so unique. These are treatment providers that are nonprofits, for-profits, large treatment centers, small treatment centers, uh, pub primarily publicly funded or primarily private insurance and also self-pay. It's a database that doesn't exist anywhere else where all of these treatment providers are uh, sharing a small subset of de-identified data from their patients. Um, and now we have in our database over 200,000 unique patient episodes of care. So we have information about the demographics of these patients, the treatment that was provided to these patients, and some of their self-reported outcomes. So things like their uh, symptoms, their substance use, their depression and anxiety symptoms, their functioning, their well-being. And right at this point, we have over 800,000 surveys. The most commonly used outcome measures I want to mention there are the PHQ, which is a depression screen, the GAD, which is an anxiety screen, and the BAM, which is uh, the brief addiction monitor. So we have all of this data in one place, which is really exciting that this is um, a program that is operated by a nonprofit asso membership association. This, kind of initiative doesn't exist anywhere else. And so if you go to the next slide to talk about the benefits of FORCE, even if you're not a FORCE data site, and of course we'd love all our treatment provider and supporter members to be FORCE data sites where you're contributing the identified data to the program. But even if you don't participate in that way, FORCE is beneficial to NAATP members in a number of ways. <clears throat> of course, if you participate, we help you leverage your data to improve your quality and demonstrate your value. And if you're not implementing measurement-based care, we can help you start to do that or, or help you to enhance your measurement-based care practice. Uh, you can then compare your organization's outcomes to others in the industry. You can participate in research studies on treatment outcomes. And in general, what we intend to do with this data is use the data as a whole to enhance our advocacy efforts. Advocacy is be done best when it has data to support it. And we have a lot of data demonstrating the impact of addiction treatment. Uh, you can see that on the next slide, <clears throat> which is uh, the front page of our, our first annual report. This was the 2023 annual summary that summarized all the data across all the data sites to date. Uh, and just I, I picked one um, one graph from that report, which is just showing the reported depression and anxiety over time from admission to discharge. You can see the the dramatic decrease there. And this is cross sectional data, so it's not exactly change uh, in each patient's report, but overall that at these time points, the depression and, and anxiety symptoms are so much lower than they were at the start of treatment. And it's things like this that are really gonna give us um, some, some useful information to use in our advocacy efforts as a whole. So, um, so, Force, if you're interested in Force, certainly uh, email us, let us know, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you more about it, about how it benefits you, um, even if you don't participate. But if you'd like to participate, we'd love to have you and support you in that effort. So on to the next slide. <clears throat> this is another area we've uh, been providing resources to our members. This right here is our uh, DEIB Advisory Council, our Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Advisory Council. Uh, this council is, uh, is an amazing group of people, of professionals that are involved in addiction treatment or recovery support, uh, something related to substance use disorders, and have been doing equity work for a long time. Um, recognizing that addiction treatment isn't always available to people from all communities with equity and recognizing that we need to provide culturally relevant services to our patients. This group is a volunteer, volunteer group of people who come together and determine what are ways that we can move the field forward in 
allowing treatment to be more accessible and uh, more culturally relevant. So you can see on the next slide, uh, two of the products that this committee has uh, helped us develop. So with that council support, NATAP has developed two assessment tools. Uh, one, the one on the left there can be used with your leadership and the one on the right is for all staff. And what these are, uh, these are based on the stages of change, which we're all familiar with as uh, you know the trans theoretical model or the stage of change model. We're, we're used to using that model with our patients to talk about how ready they are to address their substance use. And these tools are to be used with leadership or staff to say, how are we doing as an organization? How ready are we to really implement equity-based equity uh, best practices and inclusion best practices. And so if you'd like to, you know, these are free to use, these are public domain, these are available for you. Um, and you can download these and use these. And even as a member for no charge, we'll give you a report. If you use the tool, for example, with your leadership or your staff, we can provide you with a report summarizing all that data and all the comments. Um, and that's an additional, uh, benefit that we offer to our members. So, and the final slide, which is the next slide, is just a, a snip from one of those surveys that just shows how we have used the uh, stages of change um, model to apply to best practices in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And so again, if you want more information, definitely let us know and we'd be happy to talk to you about this and about force and now I'm going to turn it over to Luke Miller, who's going to talk about even more of our benefits. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Luke Miller. I am the Communication and Development Manager at, here at NAATP. Um, I'm relatively new to the organization. I started back in May. Um, so if you haven't met me yet, nice to uh, virtually meet you, I suppose. Next slide. Uh, so our membership classes are broken down into three different categories, um, supporter, provider, and affiliate. Our providers are going to be the bulk of what our membership is. It's about 80-90% um, of our membership are providers, I would say. Um, and those are the folks that provide direct professional addiction recovery services. Uh, so these guys, they need to be licensed in the states in which they operate. Um, and they also need to be accredited by either Joint Commission or CARF, as Marvin was mentioning earlier. Uh, our supporter members, these are folks that are going to be providing non-clinical services to individuals who are seeking recovery. Um, so these organizations are going to be the peer support uh, uh, recovery specialists, um, recovery residences, um, or sober living lodges. Uh, and then our uh, third category, affiliates, um, they provide services, software, or goods that supports or contributes to the field of addiction treatment, but they're not necessarily doing that patient-facing uh, uh, care. Uh, so this is a map of where all of our members are located throughout the United States. Uh, Marvin talked about this a little bit before, but we have uh, close to 1,100 members um, in our membership. Uh, according to SAMHSA, there are actually 10,000 treatment programs in the country. So each of these red dots we consider to be the best of the best. Uh, so this is not like a pay-to-play organization. Um, we will do an internal audit with you to ensure that one of these red dots or your treatment program is a place that we would send our own loved ones. Um, across the 50 states, we have a member in uh, 48 of them. So if anybody knows anyone in North Dakota or Alaska, please let us know. We would love to extend our services there as well. Um, so Marvin talked a little bit about the AID, our addiction industry directory. Um, so after applying for membership and once our internal audit is completed on your organization and you all have paid your membership dues, you will then appear on this directory, which we consider to be the directory of all directories. Because again, anybody listed on this site has been accredited by either Joint Commission or CARF, and they've gone through our internal auditing process, which means they adhere to our code of ethics uh, regarding marketing best practices and clinical service delivery. And then this is a list of just a few of the different communications that we have. Um, so as you can see, they vary um, depending on whether we release them daily, weekly, or monthly. Uh, the two that I want to spend the most time on are going to be those bottom two, the association blog and member making news, because these are the communication channels where you all get to actually help in the curation of them. 
Um, so uh, for our association blog, um, for example, some recent examples of blogs that our members have authored have surrounded topics such as setting boundaries during the holidays and the challenges of maintaining a sobriety during celebrations, to reimbursement challenges, to hiring headaches and staffing challenges. Um, so uh, if you have an idea for a blog or if there's any kind of literature you'd want to author, um, really easy. You would just uh, submit a request by emailing me at my email listed right there on the page. Um, you and I would work directly together to make sure it would, you know, make sense for our association to release that. Uh, and then the second one is member making news. Um, so these typically are released in the form of a press release or a news article um, and involve topics surrounding the launch of a new program or maybe a track. Um, or maybe it's someone on your staff has received um, an award or is being honored by an external body. Um, this wouldn't be something like, um, you know, a counselor gets promoted to lead counselor. Um, it's more high level. Um, and again, you would just work directly with me. We would go ahead and get that published. Um, and then it would be distributed out on our website to all of our members. So it's a good way for you all to, to get the word out and to uh, show your expertise in the field. Uh, our next benefit, obviously, if you are watching this recording, you are aware we do webinars. Um, uh, our, recently, we did a member needs assessment where actually this was the number one benefit our members liked the most. And why I think that is, is because it's really easy to get to. Obviously, it's virtual. Um, it happens once a month, so it's very accessible. Um, if you miss one, it's not a big deal because you can go and watch it on demand. Uh, and similarly, you can earn CEU credits through NADAC. Um, so this is obviously a huge incentive for your staff who obviously need continuing education credits every year uh, to, to get theirs done and completed. Um, if uh, you or your organization is interested in maybe presenting on a topic or expertise, uh, you can submit an abstract on our website and we will review it to see if it, it meets the needs of our membership for a possible future webinar. So this next benefit, this is going to be our extroverted members' favorite perk, and this is going to be our introverted members' least favorite perk. Uh, but nonetheless, it's very important because we provide ample opportunities for you to network with other people in the field. Um, so Kayla, my colleague, is going to go into more detail on the national conference in a few slides, but I would be remiss not to mention that here just because I think it's probably the thing we're most known for. Uh, our conference is going to take place in May in Denver. It uh, typically rotates between the East Coast, West Coast, and somewhere in the middle. Uh, so next year we'll be in, on the West Coast in San Diego, and then the following year we will be back in Washington, D.C., where we just were. Um, uh, similarly, our member-to-member -member roundtables, those are also going to happen regionally because we understand that uh, treatment and behavioral health looks different dependent on where you are located physically. Uh, so instead of you coming to us at the conference, we like to go out to you all to, to see what challenges you're facing where you're at. Uh, yesterday, we actually launched our very first C2C series, which stands for CEO to CEO. I thought this was a really great event. Um, this gives people at that top level position the opportunity to talk to one another uh, and see just on a CEO to CEO EO level uh, what challenges they're facing in the day-to-day -day operations of running a program. Um, at our national conference, we host a women in leadership breakfast, which is a really wonderful opportunity for women in leadership positions in our field to get together to talk about ways that they can continue to move the ball forward as far as DEIB goes, as well as figure out ways to continue to empower and mentor the future generation of women in our field to ensure that this industry looks like the way the world looks. Um, and lastly, uh, our online member to member forum. This is a really great tool for you all to use if you have something like a new piece of literature you'd like to share. Um, if you have any questions that don't necessarily need immediacy like treatment placement or, or something along those lines, but it's an opportunity for you to stay constantly connected with folks within the membership to see if um, people might have an answer to a question or, or a thought on something you might have. Uh, and then our salary survey, this is another one of our most sought after deliverables. Uh, as you can see, uh, we surveyed uh, approximately 114 organizations and close to 4,700 employees. 
And so we were able to uh, cipher out 56 different jobs, ranging from the top level CEO position um, down to maybe maintenance staff or even um, tech positions. So uh, this tool is really useful to CEOs and HR professionals so that they are able to gauge where they stand in their region and also gives them a way to uh, help them stay competitive within their job market. Uh, so the 2023 salary survey um, was just released about a month ago. Uh, it's available to purchase to all addiction treatment members in or outside of our membership. So uh, members will receive it at a discounted price. And then if you participated in the survey, you will receive it complimentary or free of charge upon request. And then I think uh, Marvin and I are gonna tag team this, but uh, just really briefly, um, I can go over who Mark Dunn is. Um, so Marvin, he's our, or Mark is our uh, director of public policy. He offices out of Washington DC every single day um, and advocates on behalf of our, our membership. Uh, so our field is obviously undergoing constant change and um, feels like someone like Mark is super important uh, so that he can make sure that our membership feels like they're serious participants uh, Pence in the political process at a federal level. Uh, similarly, um, on our website, we have uh, located a bunch of different resources so that you can um, feel like you can go to your state and local legislation and, and know what's going on from a state and local level as well. Um, so Marvin, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. Thanks, Luke. I'll just add a couple of things, which is that um, Mark Dunn has been our director of public policy in Washington, D.C. for many years. He is a Washington insider. Um, I, it's popular uh, it, these days sometimes to talk about uh, being an outsider, but actually an insider is is the person who gets things done. Mark is an, is an incredible access person. He has the trust um, and credibility in Washington that very few have. He can get meetings that very few can get, and he gets things done um, for us. And, and uh, it's the way policy is, is ultimately changed. I think many of you probably know our early work in, in parity was significant in, in getting parity passed. And throughout COVID, our work was significant in terms of helping treatment programs stay afloat. So Mark does a fabulous job on the policy level. He'll be at the national conference. He always is. And, and he's also available to, to uh, for direct contact uh, for folks. When you go on our website, you can get you can find us, uh, find each of us. And then Luke, I was also going to say a few words about our, our ASA state program, unless you were going to do that or somebody else was going to do that. No, go for it. You got it. So, you know, there's a saying that all politics is local. Uh, let me step back. Uh, PPUs. Um, every couple of weeks, at least once a month, uh, you will see in your inbox uh, what's called a PPU, a public policy update. And it is Mark's communication to all of the membership on what's happening in Washington. And we don't just send one out because it's time to send one out. They are important uh, communications about what's happening on the federal and state level um, and, and whether there is gra grassroots advocacy asked of you. That's critical. Um, when politicians see that their constituencies around the country care about this, that's how the phone gets answered. That's when their staffs are willing to meet with us. And so that's a really important piece of all of this. Um, and so the a ASA is, is the same uh, concept on the local level. Um, all politics is local at the end of the day, it trickles down and um, very few treatment programs have the capacity to engage in a uh, public policy program to the extent that, that we need to, to move efforts forward on the state. So we have published a state advocacy guide. Uh, go to the public policy section on our website. It's really uh, it's really a good guide. Uh, it's a how-to uh, on how to get in touch with and influence your politicians. And um, we also are building state advocacy groups across the country. Nikki Soda, who, uh, who is not with us any longer, um, she's moved on to uh, uh, other areas of, of her government relations practice, really was instrumental in establishing these uh, state groups. And if you are not aware of your state group, give us a shout so that we can connect you with your state group. And if there isn't a state group in your area um, uh, and you're interested in helping get one together, please contact us for that as well. 
Thanks, Luke. Yeah, thanks, Marvin. And I think that, that covers it. But yeah, if you want to go to our website, um, there's a plethora of tools for you to get involved, as both Marvin and I said, uh, locally um, with your state legislature. So next slide. Uh, and then, yeah, just to wrap up, these are just additional resource and, resources and benefits. Um, I'm not going to go through each individual one, but I think the two that I want to point out um, that I found maybe the most useful are in my previous position when I was working in an ad addiction treatment center um, is the job center. So this is an opportunity for you all if you have open positions or you um, need a job filled, you can go on here, um, list the job site. Um, at my last position, we actually found a counselor through this who was moving from Texas up to Minnesota. Um, so we found that incredibly helpful. Um, and I believe that counselor is still there three years later. Um, and then secondly, um, obviously, there's a lot of staffing and hiring challenges. We're seeing less and less people want to enter the field. Um, so our partnership with the Hazel and Betty Ford Graduate School of Addiction Studies um, and giving somebody maybe from your staff who, who wants to seek higher education uh, a scholarship so that they can do so. Um, so uh, that is my time. Uh, thank you all so much. And I'm going to turn it over to my, Kay uh, my colleague, uh, Kayla, who is our conference expert. Hello, um, my name is Kayla. I am um, the Communications and Program Specialist for NAATP, um, as well as I operate in um, Conference Manager um, and then kind of a little bit of an IT specialist. So I've talked to many members um, throughout the years. Um, I'm going to conclude an overview of our benefits with what I think are two of our most recognized programs. Um, so next slide, Zane, um, the member seal. So all NAATP, all NAATP members are authorized and encouraged to display this member seal on their website. Um, this accolade attracts prospective patients as well as, as builds trust and credibility in your brand. Um, specifically, it helps consumers know that you support quality practice and are committed to adhering to our code of ethics and heightened standards of business operations. Another benefit of the SEAL is search engine optimization, um, which a lot of treatment centers, um, a lot of businesses um, are um, really kind of concerned about. Um, so just like your member AID listing, which Luke went over, which has a heightened search engine rank, um, this SEAL can also help enhance your website's ranking since this SEAL um, links directly back to our website. Uh, next slide, Zane. So I've included an example of where we encourage members to place this seal on your website, um, which is along with other your other industry accolades, affiliations, accreditations, and certifications. Um, most of the time you see this on a website's bottom footer. Um, so since our seal, like I said, is an embedded HTML code, when placed correctly, it will link back to your AID delisting. So in this graph, it shows where the member seal is placed. Um, and when you click on that seal, it links back to your listing. Um, so next slide, I will go over our national conference. Um, so our national annual addiction leadership conference um, is the leading event that trains and educates the leaders of our field. Um, like Marvin mentioned at the top of the hour, um, it is our mission to provide training to ensure the equitable availability and highest quality of care. Um, so that's why we hold to this conference and that's why it is so important to us. Um, we strongly encourage all of our NAATP members to be a part of this annual gathering Members do receive significant discounts on registration and exhibit booth purchases. Um, the conference is two and a half days of thoughtfully designed presentations and workshops um, that are on both timely and evolving topics. These sessions help providers stay up to date um, with the latest developments and changes in our field, allowing them to really be ahead of the curve, um, which is um, a very important um, to do. Um, we also provide meaningful network opportunities that allow space for connection, collaboration, and dialogue 
to help you make informed decisions back in your organization. Um, we strongly believe that when we create a space for people to come together with a purpose, as a collective community, they have the ability to come up with solutions to make um, real change and progress. And next slide. Um, so um, our upcoming 2024 annual conference, um, like Luke mentioned, is scheduled in May, um, May 19th through 21st in Denver, Colorado. Um, registration to attend, exhibit, or sponsor is now open. Um, I've listed some of our key deadlines. If you want to submit an abstract, that deadline is next week. Um, award nomination or plan ahead to receive discounted rates on attendance or um, hotel room booking. Um, we will hold our much anticipated annual golf tournament the morning of the 19th, um, which helps raise money for our, our PAC, our political action committee, um, and our other special networking conference events include um, the Women in Leadership Luncheon, Exhibitor Luncheon, and Leadership Luncheon. Um, I would encourage everyone to bookmark this page, this web page. Um, this is where you will find the latest information um, on the conference as well as where to register. Um, so naatp.org forward slash conference. Um, and with that, I will head it back over to Marvin. Thank you, Kayla. Um, the slide you're looking at now, and you'll get these after this after the session, um, contains a selected number of links that um, that we think are among the first things you want to look at. Um, and and send around to your staffs. Please share all of this. Every member of um, uh, on any of our programs, every every employee of one of our treatment programs is a member. It is the the association, the company that is the member, but that entitles each and every one of the staff members to have their own individual unique sign in. If I'm already if I'm saying something that somebody else is going to go over in a minute, I apologize, but. Um, that's the way you can access everything through the member only piece. So these are good links. We think that these are things that um, you, you can take a look at from time to time. Next. Um, I think Luke's going to talk about the new member benefit guide, but I wanted to say a couple things that I neglected to. Kayla mentioned the PAC, uh, uh, the Political Action Committee. When I talked about public policy advocacy, I neglected to talk about the PAC. NAATP operates the only political action committee dedicated to substance use disorder treatment in the country. Nobody else is doing it. Um, PACs give money. Um, and the way we're able to give money is because people give money. So um, I want you to know that we operate that and that we do that and that it's very effective. It's very, very effective. Um, it get, the, the, the senator or the congressperson actually shows up when it's a day to deliver the the check, uh, by the way, but we also need your resources in order to make that effective. So, so, so there's that piece, and just another word about the AID, uh, which I, which is sort of what we could emphasize all day long. The addiction industry directory. The thing about it is that it's entirely searchable, um, with in, in a lot of categories in terms of all the services offered. We've built it in order to be especially transparent so that you can see every the more you the more you look at a treatment program the better it should look if the more you look at a treatment program online the more confused you are that's a problem right so we want to be completely thorough and transparent and comprehensive when when we um, when we put you on the AID so if you haven't been on there lately go on search some of your colleague sites look at your own site of course and um, and see how much is actually in there Yeah, and then really all I have to add to the member benefit guide is that um, my colleague Kayla uh, just did a really great job uh, revamping it and making it kind of fresh and new and updating uh, the new member benefits that that we've all been talking about um, and that it's uh, we will get it printed. Uh, we can mail them out to each of your facilities. So if you wanted to bring them and, and host them at one of your conference sites, that would be really lovely. Um, but it'll also be available uh, for you online as well and is available now. 
All right, thank you, Luke, for that. Um, yeah, please, everybody, if you have some questions, type it into that question and answer box, and we have our panel here that'll be able to ask or to answer those. I uh, do have a question here that might be maybe for Luke or Kayla. It says, uh, if I want other members of my staff to access the member only section online, how do we do that? Um, so you would encourage them to go on to our website, um, www.naatp.org, um, and then create their own unique login. Um, when you do that, then it ties them to your membership, um, and so then they can get the member benefits. Um, but um, going to our website and starting that process is it's an easy and takes about three minutes. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Kayla. And just to add to that, you know, uh, your organization is our member. And then so every one of your staff members, part of that organization is then members. So they have the ability, like Kayla said, to log in and create their own um, account under your guys's, under the organization's membership. And then they'll have access to all those tools like Kayla just said. So oh, perfect. Oh, I have one here for Luke and, and it says, um, how are your membership dues structured? Yep, so that's entirely structured based off of revenue. Um, so that's available on our website um, and looks a little bit different depending on um, what category you're in. Um, for providers, there's a variety of different structures varying from 30,000 all the way down to 1,500. Um, so I don't have those off the top of my head, but um, if you are an affiliate member, um, they're broken down into three different categories, um, varying from the most expensive being 10,000 to the least expensive being, um, I think, three grand or 3,000. So, And uh, Luke, I, thank you for that answer. I would also, um, in terms of provider membership and due structure, which is uh, um, the core of our membership, um, it is divided by gross annual, split up by gross annual revenue in nine categories. And what's important about that is we try to be equitable. Um, you pay according to your ability to pay. Um, the larger your gross annual revenue, the more the more that you pay. Um, but it also mimics the business operation makeup of the field. Um, so we have operations that range from um, uh, two, three million dollars a year in gross annual revenue to those uh, approaching a billion dollars in gross seven annual revenue and all those in between. And we have a chart that I can show you sometime. I usually show it at the um, national conference that actually uh, shows how many members are in each of those gross annual revenue categories. And that's that's really, uh, uh, sounds boring, but it really shows you the, the how the field is made up across the country in terms of its business structures. Thank you, Marvin. All right, we got a couple more coming in. So this is a non one. one. Um, do you all have plans for allowing pharmaceutical companies that specialize in OUD and SUD treatment to become members? So I suppose people are waiting for me to answer that question. So let me repeat it out, so out loud to see if I understand it. Do we have plans to allow pharmaceutical companies that are focused on opioid use disorder uh, drugs to become members. Well, um, it, you would not be a uh, provider member in terms of because you're not a licensed treatment provider um, in, in the traditional sense, but you could qualify potentially in either the supporter or affiliate category. If it's direct service to a person in recovery, that's the supporter category. If it's direct service to Pardon me, if it's not direct service, but serves the industry at large as a vendor, uh, which is probably the closest, that would be an affiliate. So um, Pete Thomas, our quality assurance officer, would be available to vet that. And if you want to pursue that, send uh, just, just send the information to info, send your question to info at NAATP.org, and Pete will get back to you on that. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marvin. All right, Ian Wood says, um, what is the association's perspective on provider membership for programs who offer primarily mental health care 
where substance use issues may at best be a secondary element of treatment? Well, whoever you are, that's an insightful question that actually indicates where the field is going, right? Integrated care is the direction of our field. Um, once upon a time, we thought about co-occurring capacity as being very limited, but it has grown and grown and grown and beyond co-occurring capacity to truly integrated care within the context of behavioral health. So as long as a provider is, in addition to whatever else it does, a, an accredited and licensed provider of SUD treatment, that is to say you have an SUD diagnosis that you can treat, you would, in theory, um, be entitled to membership. And we're seeing more and more of that. We see many, not many, we see some of our larger programs developing behavioral health programs separate from substance use disorder. We see some um, uh, combining those things. Um, and it's the, other than field consolidation, that is to say, uh, providers becoming bigger and bigger as they as healthcare tends to consolidate it in all fields. This question of, of uh, co-occurring or movement into integrated care is very much part of what's happening to the field right now. So we're paying close attention to it. Thank you so much, Marvin. Um, just a couple more and we'll go to, we just got a couple more minutes here. So listen, when working towards providing equitable care, are you considering other more affordable options to legit scripts to advertise? Oh, anonymous. So there's a whole, there's a whole webinar in that one. I'm going to bail a little bit by telling you that again, Pete Thomas is, is our guy, our quality assurance officer on legit script. So, um, we're, I, I'll, I'll try to be as brief as I can. This is a complicated one because NAATP was one of the primary movers back in 2015, 16, 17 um, in, in getting Google to pause, stop selling AdWords because it had become so corrupt. It was the height of the ethics crisis. It's when we developed our code and implemented the complaint process and um, started a process whereby some members were no longer members. Um, the solution that was proposed by Google at that time was to bring in this company, Legit Script, as a certifying body that would be a governor and a check and balance against this um, uh, in, unprofessional and sometimes illegal, certainly harmful um, online marketing practices. And we worked with Legit Script, and, and we, we were pleased to be able to work with them on the criteria. And now it's fully operational. Um, we think that LegitScript has done a really good job in getting the worst of the of the uh, bad actors out, but there are still lots of problems that that occur, and we work with them on that. Um, we are in constant communication with LegitScript. It was once thought you needed to be an NAATP member to be a LegitScript member. That was flattering, but but not true. It's never been true. Um, uh, um, but the cost is a real issue. Um, it, we probably talked to them about reducing costs um, as much as anything. It's not something that we have control over. It is something that we try to exert influence on. And, um, you know, um, in fact, we're, we, we harp on them to control their costs. It's, it's um, um, and I don't know that we've done a great job of that, but we will continue to communicate with them about that and, um, Again, if you have if you if you have more, you want to talk about the cost structure. Um, we recognize it's a problem. Give us a shout, and and I can talk to you a bit more about it, or or so will Pete. And I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer than that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Marvin. And uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. We don't have any more open questions. But if you do have more questions, uh, please email us at info at naatp.org. And uh, you guys will get an email uh, with the recording of, of this session and the slides here. So again, if you have questions, you can respond to that email or reach out to us and uh, we'll be happy to keep answering your questions and help you out. Uh, but a big thank you uh, to our team for presenting today. Thank you guys, you did a great job. Um, our next uh, big event, though, like Kayla said, is our National Leadership Conference in Denver, May the 19th through the 21st. 
Um, a direct link to that has been put in the chat. So you can uh, uh, go bookmark that page or see what's available there. Uh, registration is currently open for attendees, exhibitors, and sponsors. And uh, yeah, we really hope to see you uh, in Denver in May. Uh, but as a quick reminder, today's session was recorded. Like I said, um, it'll be on demand shortly and you'll get an email with the PDF of those slides and a link to this video. Uh, but there's no CE uh, awarded for this webinar, just to remind you on that. Uh, again, thank you to all of the attendees and your great questions today. We hope to uh, see you attend our 2024 webinar series. We're gonna be posting that real soon. And hope to see you in Denver in May. And uh, have a great rest of your day, everybody.